This video is for people that look out in the ocean and see waves like this and people body surfing in them and they're like, I'd like to do that, that looks like fun, but where do I start to learn how to do it? Even though we're not professing to be experts. Yeah, Karen. We are in these waves swimming and body surfing about five days a week currently here. Today we're sharing with you the way that we body surf. We're not necessarily saying it's the best way. It's just simply the way we do it. We're hoping to share with you enough tips to give a complete beginner enough confidence to get into waves like this and body surf if that's something you want to do. Because it's super fun, it burns a ton of calories, and you can giggle a couple of hours away having a good time. If you haven't already, we encourage you to watch another video on our channel all about how to swim and navigate in waves like this. Anytime you're doing a how-to video that has some risks involved, we're going to start with some disclaimers. First one is, you should be at least a moderate intermediate swimmer to be swimming in conditions like these. The second disclaimer is, we're not your mommy, so enter and exit at your own risk. This time of year here, the rip currents aren't particularly big, long, or strong, but you should have at least basic knowledge on what to do if you find yourself in a rip current before you apply the tips that we're gonna share with you today. Another disclaimer that we wanna offer is to never turn your back on the ocean for more than a second or two. Good tip. And finally, there is always a chance of injury or even worse, even when you follow all of these things, perfectly. All right, enough of the disclaimers, on to the fun stuff. Let's talk about wave size and time of year that we're talking about. The conditions that we are describing today are present between when we arrived about mid-November and currently about mid-March. In this time, we have experienced wave sizes ranging from one meter to about three meters. The waves behind us for reference that you see today are around 2.4 to 2.6 meters. We estimate that once you see waves in excess of about 3.5 meters, you might do well to choose other more calm beaches in the area here of Puerto Escondido. We have beach walk videos of practically every beach in and around this town. You can see them on our channel to get an idea of which beaches will be more calm for you in big waves situations. Before you head down to the beach, we recommend you do yourself a favor and take a second looking at things like tide tables, wind charts, wave height, etc. Lori and I have been using a site called magicseaweed.com to gather all this information. If there are people out there watching this video that are using other websites to gather this stuff, go ahead and add it in the comment section below so that others can use that information also. The waves that we are talking about swimming in in this video are Playa Bococho, like you see us at today, uh, and also Playa Zicatella, but on either side of it. So where Playa Principal turns into Playa Zicatella, and on the other side where Zicatella turns into La Punta, the waves will be similar to what you see here. If you find yourself in the middle of Playa Zicatella, we encourage you not to enter those waves unless you are a very experienced and strong swimmer. The waves in the middle of that beach can get huge. Mm -hmm. On the other end of the scale, if you'd like waves smaller than this or you just want to hold down a lounge chair, you might want to consider Playa's Carrizalillo, Manzanillo, Corral, Angelito, etc. First off, let's talk about reading and selecting the most appropriate waves to give you a good surf into the beach. We're looking for the Goldilocks of waves here, meaning not too big, not too small, just right, kind of like a medium wave. We frequently see people, particularly young men, waiting and selecting the absolute largest wave they can find. Now usually what that means is they'll be unceremoniously yet vigorously slammed into the beach below. This will happen one or two times. They'll adjust their behavior to be done with body surfing and you'll never see them again. We're open to help you guys not do that and instead of slamming yourself onto the beach, have nice continuous smooth rides up and onto the beach instead. Recognizing and being able to select the right wave to give you that ride you're looking for will take some practice and probably a few wipeouts. But once you start to see what you're looking for, 
you'll more often than not get that ride you want. If you're getting value from this video, help us out with the YouTube algorithm by clicking the like button. Also click subscribe and the blue bell icon so you always know when the next video is coming out. Add yourself to the comment section below. These are the things that the YouTube algorithm likes and it helps support our channel for free. Thank you. So now you're about to catch some waves. Let's talk about where to be in the ocean. Where we set up is with our feet firmly planted on the ground, on the sand, in the water. We're usually standing about belly button to chest deep and we're trying to position ourselves just before or right where the wave breaks. A few points on body position. When we're getting ready to catch a wave, we generally are facing the waves to observe what's going on. With our feet firmly planted on the ground, a wave comes out you want to surf. We turn against, away from the wave facing the beach, and we look to jump in unison with that wave. And the reason why we do that is we're trying to create enough forward momentum and speed as quickly as possible to be able to kind of merge and go with the wave. Most often you're also using swimming strokes and kicking strokes to assist you to go from a standing position of total inertia to being in the wave with speed to match the momentum of the wave. Once you've successfully caught that wave and you're surfing it, you want to drop your head so that you're looking straight down and that your head is in line with your body like this. We often see people successfully catch a wave with their head out of the water. It creates an arc in your back and it creates a, a braking system. The wave will continue by you and you'll wonder why am I not surfing it still. Putting your head down looking down will create that inline body shape and allow you to surf it with less resistance. Once you're approaching the beach we recommend a small adjustment and that is you're going to go from this position that I talked about previously and you're going to want to drop your arms and hands now so that it becomes the first point of contact when you approach the sand. So it looks a little bit like this. You're going to set up and then when you approach the beach you're going to go like this just a little bit so that these can be your stoppers. Trust me on that, we've learned it the hard way a few times. Let's touch now on how to bail out of a wave because fairly often, especially in the beginning of your practice, you'll be catching waves that are slightly too big for you to surf. What we want you to do in this case, because your intuition always tells you this wave might be a little bit too big. In these situations here, for the first two or three seconds of your ride, we want you to keep your head up and actually observe what's going on in the wave. If the wave lifts you up off the beach several feet, and or there's almost no water between the wave and you, so when the wave does crash down, it's virtually sand, you wanna be able to bail out of that wave safely rather than be a victim of what's eventually gonna happen, which is a beat down. So I'll briefly go over the technique that we use to bail out of a wave, which we affectionately refer to as the Hulk smash. And it goes like this. Let's say you're in that wave, you get up really high, there's no water in front of you, you want out. The Hulk smash looks like this. It creates a lot of backward momentum while the wave is going to keep going. If it's a particularly strong wave and big wave, you might have to use two Hulk smashes in a row to bail out the back of it. 80% of the time, this technique works 100% of the time, guaranteed. The other 20% of the time, you're going to get smashed. Revert back to wave selection. We're hopeful that these tips we've shared with you in this quick video will give you the confidence that you need the next time you see conditions like this and people body surfing to go ahead and get in there yourself, surf and have some fun. If you happen to see us down on the beach, come over and say hi if you want to learn how to body surf. We'd be happy to show you the ropes. We recommend you watch this video next. Cool? I think we're done. <laughs>